Hi, my name is Alexander Knopp, and this is an introduction to combinatorial game theory. In this class, we are going to discuss combinatorial games. Classical examples of games that can be formulated as combinatorial games are chess, shogi, and checkers. The most important properties of these games is that there is no move by chance all the information is known to players and as long as The game ends, we know the winner. Note that the last property is not quite true for chess and shockey. However, they can be a bit modified to satisfy the last constraint. Usually, in commercial games, players are making moves one after another, and whoever makes the last move wins. A classic example of a commensural game is the takeaway game. Two players have a pile of chips with 21 chip. On each turn, one of them remove one, two or three chips out of the pile. And as I mentioned, the last player who makes a move wins. So now let's imagine that both players are trying to play optimally. In other words, if they know how to win, they're using this strategy. And we would like to determine who's the winner in this game, who has the strategy to win all the time. In order to answer this question, we are going to use the technique that is called backward induction. And it's pretty simple. So if you have zero pebbles, then the player that makes the move right now loses. So it's a losing position. If you have one pebble, then the player who makes the move wins because he or she can go to the zero's position and the second player to move loses. If you have two pebbles right now, that's the same. Whenever the player starts here, he or she can remove two pebbles, go to zero, which forces the next player to lose. So it's a winning position. The same for three. However, the situation is a bit different for four. With four, it doesn't matter what kind of move the player makes, it goes to 3, 2, or 1. Therefore, the player who makes a move starting from 4 loses. With 5, we can always go to 4, so it's a winning position, and so on. Now we may see a pattern. It's if the number is divisible by 4, it's a losing position, otherwise it's a winning position. To prove that, if we start with a number that is divisible by 4, we cannot win, and otherwise we always can win, we need to use induction. We are going to prove using induction that if n equal to 4k is 
the current number then the first, second player can always win and otherwise the first player can win in order to do this we consider the base case n equal to zero for which follows from the definition similarly for n less than 4. However, let's now prove the induction step. Assume the statement is true for all k less than n. Now we have four cases if n has the remainder 0 modulo 4 in other words n is divisible by 4 then the player can go to n minus 1 n minus 2 and n minus 3 all of these three numbers are not divisible by 4. So if we make a move there, we we'll lose. Okay, let's consider the case when n is equal to 1 modulo 4. In this case, we can go to n minus 1. Which is a losing position by the induction hypothesis. So, it's a winning position. And all other cases are considered in the same way. From n, my, from n equal to 2 modulo 4, we can go to n minus 2, and so on and so forth. To finish this video, let's give a formal definition of combinatorial games. So combinatorial game is a game between two players. There is a fixed set of possible positions in the game, and both players know the current position. And for each player and each position, there is a set of possible moves and again players know these possible moves and they're not random they can select any possible move also players alternate moves so they make moves one after another and if the current player cannot make a move the game ends and there are two possible regimes how to determine who's the winner first of all them is called normal mod And in this mode, the player who cannot make a move loses. The game we just discussed, the takeaway game, is a game in normal mode. Another mode is called misereg mode. In this mode, it's the opposite. The player who make the last move loses. In the rest of the videos, we're mostly going to discuss normal mode because it's much easier to analyze. However, some results are going to be proven about misery mode as well. In the next video, we are going to develop a general technique to analyze combinatorial games. And after that, we're going to discuss several 
beautiful results about these games. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. See you later.